Perfect. All right, everybody, what's going on? And welcome to today's edition of Swag Talk. This is the show we cover the swag inside and out. I'm your tour guide around the swag. C. Wells coming at you. And today we have a new man in charge at Grambling State. Mickey Joseph was hired today. Well, he was announced today as head coach. Um, there was a little bit of, uh, I don't I don't know, a little bit of uncertainty that came around last night, but um, as he was announced as coach, and we're going to leave it at that. I'm not going to even get into any of that. Um, but he was announced today as head coach. Um, he is the 15th coach at Gramlin State. Um, so he takes over the reins of the, the Fighting Tigers football team. Uh, this this is a pretty solid hire. Um, you know, like I said, a lot of, you know, there's always, you know, a room for, you know, thought, discussion and everything. But I think this was a solid move for Gramlin. Um, I really feel like this team didn't need a lot to get where they need to go. I mean, this team was, to me, kind of on a trajectory uh, heading upward. Um, but they uh, ultimately came up short this season. So um, Hugh Jackson was let go. And now they, you know, now they have a new head man in charge. And this is, you know, this is a, a, a really, a really good move for Gremlin. Um, this is a, 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 man, a man that's from Louisiana. Uh, he's been around um, for quite some time. I mean, he's been a, a coach um, on various levels since 1995. So, um, we'll let's go ahead and talk about a little bit of who he is, and and you know what you know what what can be expected. Um, obviously, he's from Marrero, Louisiana, which, if you don't know, is right outside of New Orleans, where it basically is New Orleans. Um, he um, played at Nebraska. From nineteen ninety from nineteen eighty eight to nineteen ninety one, um, he was um uh, he he went to um he was a quarterback in Nebraska and he played there um, for three years and then he went to the Hamilton Tiger Cats um, in the CFL. He started his coaching career in nineteen ninety five to ninety six at Omaha North High School in Nebraska. He was the quarterback and receiver coach. From there, he went to Wayne State in nineteen ninety seven where he coached. Um, well, he coached there for one year. Uh, he came back to Louisiana in 1998. He coached quarterbacks at Archbishop Shaw in New Orleans. Uh, after that, he went to Tulane as a graduate assistant in 1999. Uh, he went to Alabama State in 2000, coached receivers. Um, he coached quarterbacks at Nickel State from 2001 to 2003. Uh, from 2004 to 2005, he was a uh, running back coach at Central Oklahoma. And then from 2005 to 2008, he coached at Desire Street Academy. Uh, from there, uh, he went to Langston uh, from 2006 to 2007, where he was the associate head coach. Uh, then from 2011 to 2012, he uh, he, he remained at Langston. Um, from there, he went to uh, Gramlin from 2004. Uh, excuse me, he went to Alcorn in 2013, where he coached uh, receivers and, sp and special teams. And he was associate head coach. 2014 and 15, he was a receiver coach and special teams coach at Gramlin. Uh, 2016, he coached running backs at at Louisiana Tech. Uh, 2017 to 2019, he coached wide receivers at LSU. And 2020 to 2021, he was associate head coach and uh, wide receiver coach at LSU. 2022, he was the associate head coach, wide receiver, and passing game coordinator at uh, Nebraska. And then in 2022, he took over as interim coach at Nebraska, and now he is the man at Gramlin. So, as you can see, um, as you can see, he he um, he's been around. Um, he's a guy who you know he he knows the area. He coached in the area. Um, he does have you know some Power Five coaching experience. 
And, you know, he had a stint as a head coach, uh, as an interim coach in Nebraska. So he, you know, he's he understands, you know, running a program. Um, he He's going to I think he's going to do a pretty good job at, at Grambling. Um, like I said, I feel like this team is not that far off the pace um, because personally, I think this team had a great opportunity to to make it to the uh, to to win some games at Gremlin and be um, a, 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 um, a factor in the West Division uh, came up short um, during the season at toward the end of the season. But there are pieces still there offensively. I think the defense is probably going to be the area that you really need to kind of. Um, put a little bit more into I mean, you're losing some key guys off of that defense and the defense was kind of up and down all year. Uh, offensively, you know, I think, you know, I don't know how, you know, when you lose guys to the port, I don't know how easy it is to get them back now, but I do think um, your first phone call needs to be to Floyd Chalk to see if you can get him back. I mean, obviously these guys have, you know, power five FBS dreams, you know, it's, it's hard to, to sway them. But I think that if that's, if there's any guy, that you want to try to get back. You want to try to re- keep that backfield as intact as you can. Um, you do have a quarterback that's coming back. You, you know, you're losing Lyndon Rash at wide receiver, but you still have some really solid guys um, that are remaining there. So to me, I think the key is to just come in and, and, and just, you know, get this, get this team headed in the right direction, um, get that stability back, um, and just, you know, focus on getting Gremlin back to Gremlin. Um, because primarily to me, um, like I said, I, I think this team was not that far off. I mean, they, you know, they had a losing streak in the middle of the season um, and came up short there, but they did have their chances to get those wins. Um, a couple of late losses really soured people on the direction that the team was going. Um, I think that, like I said, that this team does have a great opportunity. You know, I, I don't know if this is a, you know, I don't know how long it'll take to get where they want to go, but I do think that, you know, they have a guy who's going to come in and lay the foundation that he wants to get them where they want to go. So I, I, you know, I think that this is a very, a very good, a very good, a very good hire. Um, just looking at some of what he's done in his time as a coach, just to kind of give you an idea. Like I said, he, um, he completed, he completed the, uh, the, the 2022 campaign as an interim coach in Nebraska. Um, prior to Nebraska, he spent five seasons at LSU. Um, he was a wide receiver coach and associate head coach. He was a key member of that LSU, LSU national championship team in 2019. Uh, his receiver set an FBS record with 60 touchdowns and helped Joe Burrow win the Heisman Trophy, um, passing for over 5,600 yards. Uh, also in 2019, he assembled, helped assemble the best group of receivers that, that, that they've had in quite some time in the SEC. You know, Jamar Chase, uh, Justin Jefferson, Terrace Marshall, they combined for 241 catches for 3,991 yards and 51 touchdowns. Uh, his reputation and, uh, for recruiting and developing wide receivers was highlighted at LSU when he was recognized as rivals top 25 recruiter. Four, four of his wide receivers were selected in the first three rounds of the 2020 and 2022, 2020 and 2021 NFL drafts. Um, he was part of the offensive staff that helped LSU set several records. Um, in 2016, he worked as the running backs coach at Louisiana Tech. He helped the Bulldogs uh, to a 9-5 record and win the Armed Forces Bowl. Uh, they ranked number two in the nation in scoring in his time there, averaging 44.3 points per game. They averaged 514 yards of offense, including 363 passing and 151 on the ground. Um, he did spend two, you know, he did spend time at Gremlin. Who served as the receiver coach and special teams coach? Uh, he arrived at Grambling. The Tigers were coming off of a one and ten record in 2013. In the two years he was there, uh, the Grambling Tigers finished seven and five and nine and three with a SWAC West Championship in 2015. Uh, in 2015, his receivers totaled 2,250 yards and 25 touchdowns as Grambling scoring offense ranked fourth, and uh, the passing offense ranked 21st among all FCS teams. Uh, prior to that, he spent time at Alcorn helping the Braves to a, a uh, to a nine and three record there, which at that time was the most was it, was, at that time was the most wins in thirty years. Uh, he also spent five years at Langston uh, from two thousand eight to two thousand and twelve, elevating the head coach there uh, in twenty eleven. He led the Lions to a thirteen and seven record in two seasons. 
And like I said, he got his he's got his coaching, college coaching start at Wayne State in Nebraska. Um, and then he ended up at um Archbishop Shaw and Tulane. So he's a guy, like I said, he's a guy who's been around. Um, and I think, you know, you can you can kind of look at, you know, look at his track record and you see that this is a very solid, solid move, especially on the offensive side of the ball. I think the key to this move and any other move is the staff, you know, what's his staff going to look like, you know, who he's going to retain, if anybody, um, and what, you know, what he's going to bring in. I think sure enough, that defensive side of the ball um, is very vital. Um, and, with you know, with signing day rapidly approaching, not a lot can be done uh, in terms of, you know, establishing new relationships right now. So maybe, you know, you hopefully, you know, your staff who's been there, uh, Coach Simon and those guys who have been there um, in the interim, Hopefully they, you know, they've been laying some pretty good groundwork on some guys and they can kind of help, you know, help ease the transition. And, you know, some of the guys that they've been recruiting, they can, you know, help get some of those guys in and then get aggressive uh, in the portal um, before the, the the national signing day in February. So, you know, there's, you know, there's still a lot of, you know, there's, there's still some time to make some moves. Signing day may not be, you know, spectacular, but there's still a time to make moves. And so we'll see how this goes. But I really think that this is a solid move for Gramlin. Uh, it took him a, a, a bit to get there. And, you know, like I said, there were some twists and turns toward the end. But they, 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 they have their man. And now we'll see if he has the ability to put this program on track because a, a solid to great Gramlin is good for the swag. Um, you don't want your top name teams to be down for long. And, they, you know, they, they are going in the right direction. So maybe they, this is the guy who can continue them on that path upward. So with that being said, I'm your tour guide around the swag. See well signing out, and I will catch y'all on the rebound. Peace.